You paid it all up on the cross. You bled and died. Welcome to Creations by In Him. I am your host, Dr. Dolores Jones. Want to say welcome and thank you so much for taking this time out and tuning in to OCN and our program. We're going to continue on from the last time we were talking about fail-proof faith and that every child of God who has received and confessed Jesus as personal Lord and Savior, we've all been dealt that same measure of faith. The moment that we receive and confess Jesus as personal Lord and Savior, that measure of faith was already dealt to us. And the Word tells us that if you have faith as a grain of a mustard seed, I know that's something awesome to think about. He said that you can say to this mountain, be thou removed and be thou cast into the sea. And you do not doubt in your heart, but believe that those things that you say shall come to pass. You shall have whatsoever you say. Hallelujah. According to what God's word says. So you have your Bibles. If you will be so kind to turn with me, we're going to start off in Romans chapter number 12. We're going to continue on Romans 12, and we want to look at verse number three, which says, uh, and I'm reading out of the ever-increasing faith uh, Bible, and uh, so starting off with verse number three, Romans 12, for I say, through the grace given to me, to everyone who is among you, not to think of himself more highly than he ought to think, but to think soberly as God has dealt to each one a measure of faith. So we all start off with the same measure of faith. But what needs to take place is that faith in the word of God needs to be developed. And, uh, the way that the, that faith is developed, I must continue to hear it and not only hear it, but I need to apply myself to be the doer of the word and just not the hearer only. So you say, well, how do I get this faith, Dr. Jones? No problem. I have the answer for you. While we're in Romans, this time go over to Romans chapter number 10. Romans 10. So we want to find out, well, how do we get this faith? Not a problem. I have an answer for you. All right. Romans 10. And let's look at number 17. It says, so then faith, what comes by hearing? Hello, hearing and hearing by the word of God. That's why family, we have to be careful what we hear and how we hear. And that's why it's so very important. We have to be uh, cognizant of what where we're attending church, what am I receiving uh, uh, from the ministry that I'm a part of? Am I being taught faith? Am I being taught the word of God? It makes a difference. And to that degree, that's how you're going to be able to succeed in the word of God and be the doers and just not the hearers only. Because see, God says that it's impossible to please him without faith. Oh, you don't believe me. Let's go over to Hebrews. Hebrews chapter number 11. Very important. Hebrews 11. And let's look at verse number 6. It says, but without what? Faith. 
it is imp it's impossible, hello, to please him. For he who comes to God must believe that he is and that he is a rewarder. Ooh, listen to that. And that he's a rewarder, family, to those who diligently seek him. That means that I'm not going to hit and miss. I'm going to be involved in this word on a daily or everyday basis. And it says because he said, and he is a rewarder to those who diligently seek him or seek what his word says. Okay. So that means that the ball is in our park. That means we have a responsibility in order for us to learn how to walk by faith and not just to hear about it, but to, to actually be doing it on a regular basis. Uh-huh. So now we say, well, what is faith? I'm glad you asked me. I have another answer for you. While you're still over in Hebrews 11, go back to number one in that, that same chapter. It says, now, faith is today, not tomorrow. It's right now, in O W. It says, now faith is the substance. So faith has substance. That's why I can dare to trust God based on what his word says, because what I'm believing and confessing in line with this word is something that already exists. It has substance. Now faith is the substance, hello, of things hoped for, the evidence of things not seen. So. That's why it's so important to know that when I find out what God's word says about a situation that I, I need to pray about or, or, or something that I'm believing him for uh, uh, a need to be met, well, I have to know that it says now faith is the substance. So when I open my mouth to petition him based on what his word says, I know that it's something that already exists. And then it says, and then faith is something that I'm hoping for based on what his word says. And it's the evidence of things not seen or perceived with our five senses. What you can hear, feel, hear, touch, and taste. Understand that when it comes to the word of God, you have to turn off sense knowledge evidence. What I can hear, feel, hear, touch, and taste. It has nothing to do that with that. It's based on what I believe and what I confess based on what God's word says. I'm giving his word back to him. He's a faithful God. He's the one that said, I will confirm my word with the signs following. That's all I need to know. I make my confession uh, based on the word of God. I thank you, Father, that I believe that it's a done deal in the name of Jesus. That's what it means. Go over now to 2 Corinthians 5. Go over to 2 Corinthians. We'll look at 2 Corinthians chapter number 5. And here's where the word is telling us uh, in verse number 7. It says, for we walk by what? Faith. Uh, and not by sight. Not what we can see, but what we believe according to the word of God and what we confess according to the word of God. And as I do that, that's when the manifestation of what I have petitioned God for will come to pass. I'm walking by my faith. I've, I've asked the father for whatever it is that I, I, I'm believing for at that particular time. And father, I want to thank you that I believe I, I received my finances, if that's what you're believing him for, according to what his word says. What is Philippians 4.19 says, but my God shall supply all your need according to his riches and glory by Christ Jesus. Yes, he said he will supply it. So I can trust him based on what his word says. And then you have to understand now I have to be having uh, already planted. It's not going to happen uh, by osmosis. I have to plant seed out there, give him something to work with. And I can know, and that's my assurance, that what I have petitioned him for, if it's finances, that it's a sure thing, it's on the way. I know it because I'm walking by faith and not by sight. 
I'm continuing to thank my father on a daily basis. Father, I want to thank you that I believe that my finances are met, whatever it is, the, the amount or whatever, that's between the Lord and you. And you do that on an everyday basis. Father, I want to thank you that my $500 is here in the name of Jesus. I believe by faith that I have it. I receive it in the name of Jesus. And you continue to do that and thank him. And remember, yes, we have an enemy. His name is Satan. He is the God of this world. According to John 10 and 10, he's the thief. He's the one that where the word says that he comes to kill, to steal, and to destroy. God says, I've come that you might have life and that you might have it more abundantly. So see, he's given us family. There are so there's so much in the word of God. I get so excited. God's word is inexhaustible <laughs> and, it's, and it works. But there again, as I've stated before and will continue to, to bring to your remembrance, we have to do things God's way and not our way. And when you do that, you can be assured that you will receive that you have petitioned him for. And you're continuing to walk by faith until that manifestation comes to pass. Now, let's go back over to Romans, the book of Romans, uh, number three, Romans chapter number three. And I want to point something out to you here. Romans three, and let's look at verse number 27. It says, where is boasting then? It is excluded. By what law? Of works? No but by the law of faith. Faith is a law. See, that's why it says in, over in Hebrews eleven six 6, that it's impossible to please God uh -huh, without faith. Faith is a law. So we have to be uh, uh, cautious to know that if we want to be pleasing to God, we got to do things his way. But it's by faith. It's faith that pleases him. Okay, let's go over to Hebrews. Back over to Hebrews chapter number 10. Hebrews chapter number 10. We're talking about fail-proof faith. One thing about it is he's not made us a failure creature, and we don't have to fail about anything based on the word of God. However, we have to do things his way. Remember, his way and not our way. It says, uh, Hebrews 10, look at 38. It says, now, mm, sounds like number Hebrews 1 and the, uh, 11 and 1, now faith is. It says, now the just, those of us who have been de the justified are declared righteous. It says that we must, it, we must live by faith. It says, but if anyone draws back, he says, my soul will have no pleasure in him. Well, if you're like me, I don't want to be in that club. I want my father to be pleased with me. I'm looking forward to hearing, well done, <laughs> thou good and faithful, ser faithful, faithful servant. And see, that's another thing about, about God. He is faithful to us, and he wants us to learn how to be faithful to him. Hello. <laughs> but that's something that's on you to do. It's on me to do. And we have that responsibility because we will have to answer about what we have been doing with what we've been hearing according to what God's word says. When you're hearing the, un, uh, the, the truth of what God's word says, yes, and, and you're not doing anything with it, that's not a good thing. But you want to be the one that is the doer and not the hearer only. So don't forget that. Very important. Hallelujah. Uh, let's go now and let's look at, uh, go over to the Old Testament here. We're going to look at Habakkuk, the book of Habakkuk, and see what it's saying according to what uh, faith we're talking about. Fail-proof faith in the book of Habakkuk. And let's see here in my Bible, uh, this is on page 1340. I don't know what Bible you're in. But anyway, Habakkuk, and it's chapter 2. And if you can't find it, just write it down. You can, you can look at it later. Habakkuk, chapter 2, verse number 4. Listen to this. Uh, in the latter part of verse number 4, it says, But the just, there again, those that have been justified, declared the righteous, shall live 
by what? His faith. Oh, it says that the just, those that have been justified, declared righteous, shall live by his faith. That means I can't live by your faith. You can't live by my faith, but you got to live. But we have to live by our faith individually. That's why, see, God has given us that measure of faith. Now, there again, we must do something about it. And faith is a law. And then it reminds us that it's impossible to please God. You can't even please your father if you're not doing or uh, walking by faith and not by sight. So it's very, very important, family, to get this word, understand, get an understanding of it and, and begin to walk in it. It's so very simple. But see, it's the devil, the enemy, Satan, the God of this world, the one that brings confusion. He's the one that brings the negative thoughts, ideas and suggestions to the mind, telling you this, that and the other. That's why you need to know what God's word says. And when he, the enemy tries to come and bring dumb thoughts and lies to you, you have to say, no, I'm not receiving that stuff in the name of Jesus. So you have a responsibility. You have to not even sit there and entertain that, the stuff that the enemy is trying to feed you with because that's his game. He's the, he's the author of confusion. He is a liar. Matter of fact, he is a murderer. He's all of that. In the truth, there's no truth in him. You don't believe me. Well, let's take this time. We want to hear a song. Hallelujah. Uh, and then let this minister to you. We'll come back and we'll pray with you. Thank you. Unselfishly died on Calvary Oh, how you gave your life for me Bruised, scorned, crowned your head with thorns No greater love performed for me Nails in your hands, nails in your feet Piercing your side, could barely breathe Could have came down, yet you remain Standing in awe of the price you pay I never knew of a love so true You gave your life and still I heard you Lost so many times to supply you again But I repent, forgive me for my sin
on the cross, you bled and died. All right, family, or what those of you who have not yet made Jesus the Lord of your life, if you'd be so kind to just to repeat this prayer after me, never want to take it for granted that everyone is saved. So it only will take a few moments if you'll bow your heads and repeat after me. Dear God in heaven, your word says, according to Romans 10, 9 and 10, that if I'll confess with my mouth the Lord Jesus and believe in my heart that God raised Jesus from the dead, I will be saved. For with my heart I believe unto righteousness, and with my mouth confession is made unto salvation. Lord Jesus, I receive you now as my Lord and my Savior. I want to thank you for taking spiritual torments for my sins. I want to thank you for taking mental distress for my worries and my anxieties. Your word says in 1 Peter 2.24 that by the stripes of Jesus I was healed by faith. Based on your word, I receive my healing. In the name of Jesus, I thank you, I praise you, and I say amen. Oh, glory to God. Hi, brother. Hi, sister. Welcome to the family of God. Now, there again, it's important that you get involved with a word teaching church that is teaching the uncompromising word of God. And uh, oh, we want to just remind you and, 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 and keep you in remembrance. They're OCN. They would like to hear from you, so drop them a line and tell them how the broadcast is being a blessing to you. And also the address of OCN is on your screen where you can send your tithes, your offerings, and your gifts of love. And we thank you in advance. Just remember that you are helping to make it happen. Hallelujah. And so it's important. So in order for the broadcast to stay on your local TV station, OCN needs your support. Also, hallelujah, if you are in need of additional prayer, you can call our number that's on the screen. Someone will pray with you and come into an agreement with you based on the word of God. Remember, we love you. You are very special. God loves you and Jesus is Lord. Remember also that this is definitely another week of the devil's defeat. So we say thank you for taking this time. We'll see you for the next time. All right. In the name of Jesus. Hallelujah. You paid it all up on the cross. You bled and died. Paid